Welcome to your TPS due dates and practice management overview. Gone are the days of written to-do lists. With TPS's due dates, the workflow process becomes so easy to manage. With only a few simple steps, you can make sure your firm's workload is distributed to the employees or partners responsible and that they're set up to recur however often you need them to. How you set up your workflow process is entirely up to you, but using due dates makes sure it's all taken care of in a timely manner, no work is missed, and the entire process is carefully managed from start to finish. Think of it as a client's banker's box shows up at the front desk, it's received in, and then it moves from one employee to the next until the job is done, all managed in TPS. Let's take a look at TPS so I can show you the steps to setting up your due dates and how to keep it all running smoothly. TPS software is a practice management solution that can be an essential tool to any growing accounting firm. But what is practice management? Time and billing, of course, makes up a large part of practice management, and TPS has over 400 standard reports that can provide information on employee productivity, firm billing realization, accounts receivable, and profitability by work, employees, clients, and partners. Check out our overview videos on time entry, billing, and reports to see more about these important aspects of practice management. For this video, we'll be focusing mostly on client relationship management, due date tracking, the workflow process, and document management. To get started, let's use an example most firms can relate to, an S-Corp with a December 31st year end. With this type of client, the accountant has to remember a number of things during that year that involves tasks assigned to him and several other staff members. Trying to manage all of this can get complicated. People start getting creative using Excel spreadsheets, Outlook calendars, and old-fashioned paper notes that follow the file around the office. In TPS, we have a very simple method that we call due dates. And there are several other features within our program that tie into our due dates, resulting in even more efficient practice management. So let's get back to that example of the December 31st year-end company. In the U.S., a December 31st S-Corp needs to file their return by March 15th. So what that means to the accountant is that sometime in December, he has to notify the client that their year-end is approaching and remind them of the documents needed to complete the year-end and when they need to be delivered to your office. In January, the W-2 should be created and sent out, and then in March, the tax filing needs to be completed. So how would we manage that in TPS? If you go to the client side of things, it all starts in the client properties under the due dates tab. Here you'll set up all the recurring tasks or due dates that you typically do for each individual client. For example, this client, Norton Medical Supplies, has four due dates or tasks. But these three right here relate to the task we were talking about with the S-Corp December 31st year-end. So we have our year-end documentation and our W-2 preparation and the filing of the annual taxes. Some clients could have two or three due dates or others could have six or more because you do many things for them. So all of these that you see here under the due dates tab are basically the rules for what recurring work you do for the client and will be used to populate the due dates calendar, which is similar to a big spreadsheet for the entire office to share. So you can kind of think of this client property section as the client's personal file drawer in your office filing cabinet. Nobody can see what needs to get done unless they open this drawer. We need to take what's here and put it on the firm calendar so that everybody can see it. So to do that, we have to do a quick step where we go up to Tools, choose Due Date Utility, Go to Create Dates for Calendar, and then we put in our range. So we're going to go ahead and leave our from date as today. We have everything from December and January of this year all the way to March of next year. That's our due date. So we need to make sure that our to date here goes all the way at least through March of 2020. And once I click Generate, I'm doing everything from this date until that date. I will click Generate. We see everything for this client, Norton Medical Supplies, right now because I've already created everything else in the system. So right now, just the ones that hadn't been generated are showing up right here. I'm going to go ahead and click Create, and that will push it through to the calendar. Five due dates were created. Okay, they've disappeared from here, so now they're on the calendar. So now if I go over to the due date calendar, by default it shows all of your clients' due dates that fall within the current month. That's just the default, and you can always change the date range to see the entries coming due in future months. 
you have these filters over here that will let you cycle through different months. Or you could actually click through here and do it manually like that. So getting back to our example of December 31st S Corp, let's say it's the beginning of December and we need to get that year end letter out. So I'm going to come over here and use these filters and do December 1st to December 31st of this year. Hit this reload transactions button. Then I want to filter by the job, sort it by the job, I should say. And down here I can see that I actually have three clients that I need to send out this year-end document to. TPS makes it easy to send those year-end letters by setting up some key things back in the client properties. So we're going to come back to the client properties so I can show you something real quick in the general tab here. First of all, we have the year-end here. So, for example, we were talking about Norton Medical Supplies. Their year-end is set up as 31st of December. You can also maximize functionality by setting up categories for all the services you provide your clients. For example, 1040, 1065, 1120S. That way you can make use of categories and year-ends to filter your client's list and send letters to only those clients who meet your filter. So now, if I were to go to Tools, Mass Mailing Letters, which is what I would use to generate Word documents to mail out, or Email Mass Letters, which is what I would use to generate emails with PDF attachments. In this tool, I can use filters such as the categories or the year-end so that I can actually send out that year-end document that needs to go out to our clients. But just know this is how you would actually get the printed documents or for this case, send out the email documents to your clients. Once I send the letter to the clients, I can go back to the due date calendar, back to December, go ahead and sort these, there are three year-end right here. We can go ahead and mark these as completed. So I highlight one, hit shift, and grab the other two. And then instead of going one by one, I can use this icon up here to complete selected due dates to hit them all with the same due date. Then I can also use the traffic light icon right here to change the status of all three of them. So I'm going to change the status to complete and click assign. Now if I scroll over to where you can see the status column, you can see that they are all marked as complete. All right, so now let's fast forward to January. You can see that we have a lot of W-2s here that are coming due. And what do we have? Some payroll, some bookkeeping. We have all this stuff going on down here. Now remember the client ID, the client name, engagement, work code or job here as you see, due dates, hours, description, those fields are all populated based on the rules stored back in the due date tab of the client properties. So depending on what you put in there is what you'll see here. But the rest of the fields, that's all information your staff is going to be updating as we go forward. So example, back to working with Norton Medical Supplies, if I click on this one here, when the documents come in, when we actually receive everything, we can come up here, whoever the employee is that's responsible for this, for checking that all the information is actually here, they'll come up here and alter the date received date. So they can put in, let's say today was the 1st, they'll put in January 1st as the date received. So that records the date that the paperwork was brought in. This might help you prioritize getting those clients work out first that brought their paperwork in first. You might also want to add a note that all the documents have been received. Okay, so I've jumped forward to March with our client, our 1120S client, Norton Medical Supplies, because I want to show you what you do when you're missing some paperwork. So let's imagine that we're missing some of the bank statements for Norton Medical Supplies, our 1120S client. So I need to put that in the notes. Missing bank statements. As soon as I X out of it, it stays. Now, whoever is responsible for this, when they speak to the client, they will have that information. They can let them know that we're missing the bank statements and can't complete it until we receive those. If this is something that's time sensitive, you may want someone to follow up with that client. So TPS offers a client log with alerts feature, which supplements our due dates. In this instance, we know that the client was missing some bank statements, but did anyone contact the client to bring in the missing statements? Is there a follow-up date so we can make sure action is being taken by an employee and it's not going to slip through the cracks? If you enter a follow-up date, the employee is going to be alerted about this until they enter a completion date on this entry. We'll discuss the client log in a bit more detail shortly. But let's say that because we're missing documentation, I know we're not going to file on time and I need to file an extension. The extension filed field is where you can input the date you notified the IRS you're taking the extension. So we're going to put in here that it's March, let's just say March 10th. 
The extension due field is where you can input the new due date for this particular record, and I'll put in July 16th of this year. That way, when I move my calendar forward into July, I'll see it there, my 1120S right here. Now that I'm in July, I can see this particular due date is still due. It's not slipping through the cracks, and we can get this done to make sure it's filed on time. So going back to March, I'm going to make sure that an employee is assigned to this. I'm going to choose Alex, and I'm going to change the status to waiting because we're waiting on that paperwork. We're not ready to complete this just yet. If you look over here, you can see my status now is waiting. Alex is assigned to it. The manager or preparer field gives you one extra level of staff assignment for the task. So I might have Alex as the employee responsible, but maybe I want to assign Donna White as the manager or someone as a second set of eyes to make sure that the job actually gets done. All right, so let's talk about how this usually works. So we know that Alex is responsible for this, is in waiting status. Let's imagine that Norton Medical did bring in the paperwork that we needed, the missing bank statements. So Alex will come in here, update this, maybe say all bank statements received. Then he can put in the date received. He received those on, let's say we're in March, so say March 24th. The next step is to assign it to the person who handles the next part of the process. Donna White reviews his work, so he will assign it to her by changing the employee responsible to Donna White. He also needs to change the status. That's important because it needs to go to the next step. So whatever the next step of the process is in your office, let's say that it's for review because Donna always reviews Alex's work. So now it's assigned to Donna for review. All the information has been received. So now, if I were Donna and I came in, and I just wanted to see what I was responsible for, Donna would come into the due date screen and then use the filters up here to filter for whatever she's looking for. So probably she wants to change the employee to herself so she can see what she's responsible for. She might want to click on just the incomplete items and then reload transactions, and she will see that one from Norton Medical Supplies that was reassigned to her. She can see the extension file date, the extension due. She can scroll over and see the status. It's for review. And then she can take it upon herself to finish it up, do her part of it, and either reassign it to another employee if there is another part of the process, or if she is the one that needs to complete it, then she just needs to change the completion date in here, change the status to whatever the final status is, which could be complete or whatever your office has put in for your final status, and then that would be marked as complete. This is really useful for managers because they can come in and play around with these filters and see who's responsible for what, what status it's in. It's just a very useful tool. I think you can see that this could be reassigned to two, three, four, five different employees. It just depends on how many steps you have in your process as it works its way through to completion. Donna wants to go back to the regular calendar. All she has to do is come over here, take her own name out, put this back to all, and reload transactions, and it will take you right back to the main screen. If at any point you need to email a client, you can simply click on this yellow button here to email a client, then you put in the subject. Remember, part of the email process is you have to make sure that you come up to tools and that you've turned on your Outlook connection. So as long as your Outlook connection is turned on and you've hit that yellow button and put in the subject line, TPS will launch a new email in Outlook, and it will log that that email was sent in the client log. You have the due date log, but we also have the regular client log. So over here, you can see emails that were sent, phone, etc. So that's a simplified explanation of how the due dates work. Everybody in the firm gets to see what's outstanding, where it is in the process just by checking the status column, and who is responsible for it with the employee column. But because there are often multiple steps in the process of completing a due date, client log can be used to make sure nothing slips through the cracks or falls off an employee's radar as you pass the job from one employee to the next. For instance, if you need to let an employee know there's a task within a due date that needs to be taken care of, all you do is, let's say it's this one here, we right click, go to the client log, so client log, in addition to email and phone and that kind of stuff, it allows you to also put a note in here. So you could open this up, choose note, and then in the description box type review 1065, whatever it is that you want to put in there as the note, set a follow-up date. So let's say it's to, I'm going to go ahead and put in today just so I can show you, but I'm going to change the employee to that employee that I want to actually see this note. So I'm going to change this to Donna. So that when Donna next logs into the program, she's going to be alerted that there's something in the client log that needs her attention. I'll show you how that works right now. I logged out and I'm logging back in as Donna. So here's that alert. You have three outstanding items in the client log. Would you like to see them? So now Donna's going to get this alert every time she logs into TPS until she enters a completion date. So she's gonna go ahead and say okay. 
the one that we just put in here was the note. So let's say the completion date, she goes ahead and she reviews it like it's asking for here. And she puts in today's review date. As of that point, she will no longer get that alert. So until she actually puts in a completion date, if she were to log out and log back in, she's gonna get that alert again to remind her. So now I've told you that the file just keeps going from one employee to the next, and that's a nice feature. You can always see who has it, what status it's in, but that brings me to the statuses, which is kind of important. So the statuses over here, all these statuses are self-defined. You get to create your own list of statuses or steps that your office follows. So just make sure that your employees are very well aware of the statuses, which comes next, and how they should be going through with these statuses so that everything flows very smoothly in the office. I think you can see that TPS is more than just a time and billing software. We provide the key tools for effective practice management that helps you run as efficiently as possible. Make sure you check out our other videos that will help you see how simple yet how powerful TPS can be in helping you manage your practice. Thank you for watching.